Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 333, where we look at the Legacy Chiba Top 8 giant tournament over in Japan. Legacy is hot there. The organizer of the event gave away 500 spots to students, and people were super happy to play in this. I hear that it may have even sold out at like 2,500 participants. Just crazy large, awesome tournament with lots of cool innovation in it. In the top 16, we saw this blue-red Delver deck that has Bedlam Reveler in it as a two of awesome card often only costs you two mana because you've got lots of instants and sorceries in your graveyard and it does something else can you say ancestral recall like too cool draw three cards yeah you got to discard some cards first but you're probably out of cards at that point anyways three four draw three awesome card i would pick up my foil versions right now another cool deck at 18th is Food Chain, Running, Eternal Scourges. It's nice to see new tech in a crazy fun combo deck. Manipulate Fate is also in there. Perfect card for this deck. This is a very fun legacy deck. If you're looking for a combo deck that's a little bit off the beaten path, I would definitely check out Food Chain. We've got three Miracles decks. Yes, count them three Miracles decks. Now, it's not seven, so it's not a typical Japanese tournament. It's only three Miracles decks in the top eight. Control is super popular over there. This is your classic Miracles control with two Entreat the Angels, a few Vendillion clicks, and Snapcaster Mages is really the only ways to win. Hardcore control. The next list that we're looking at is a little more of a modern version that plays Montessori Mentor and Predict. I would actually add more copies of Predict. But what is really cool is the third Miracles list, which has Supreme Verdict, Stifle, Back to Basics, and nine basic lands. It only plays two Tundras. It saves about $500 in the cost by cutting down on the dual lands and hating on dual lands with Back to Basics. Wonderful, wonderful card. Out of all of the lists, I like this one the most because it also has a singleton stifle, a singleton spell pierce, a singleton misdirection, a singleton council's judgment, a singleton entreat the angels, a singleton supreme verdict, a singleton vensor. Yes, my singleton heart screams for all of these cool options. Sensei's Divining Top to find the one that you need and the ability to keep your opponent guessing as to what cards you are actually playing in your deck or even if they've got the deck list, which cards you actually have in your hand. It is much tougher to play against a list like this than a list where you know absolutely every time what is most likely to be in your opponent's hand. Very, very cool deck. I like this a lot. Cavern of Souls in the sideboard too. Oh, so good. That's what you get when you're playing a hardcore control deck and you're playing in Japan where you know you're going to hit other control decks. Elves. Classic Elves. Elves has been a great deck ever since Gaia cradle was moved up to the status of being able to play two of them when you drop the second one you get rid of the one you already used going way over the top in mana it was a good deck before that and this particular deck though also has some really cool tech in it nissa vital force in here Five casting costs, Planeswalker, that allows you to do some really cool stuff, including return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, so most of your creatures can come back. Put out some 5-5 five, five elementals as another win condition, and Leovold is in here. Makes your opponent's removal look really, really sad, and also is wonderful to put into play against show and tell where your opponent's putting out Gristlebrand. Really, really nice card overall. This deck is taking a top tier one deck and adding some interesting innovation to it. If you're interested in playing elves, definitely check out this deck list. We've got a classic Storm deck here. I wish I could say something innovative about this. It's a crazy good deck. It is a very standard build. We're seeing Dark Petition over the Grim Tutor. As always, this one does run both Tendrils and Empty the Warrens in, as main deck kills, but we've seen that for a while now. This is the least innovative and most consistent 
of the combo decks that we see here. I'm kind of surprised to see that it hit the top eight, considering how popular Death and Taxes has been recently. The sideboard helps a little bit there, but not much. I mean, we're not even seeing your huge anti-white cards here. Disfigure is there in the sideboard. Chains of Vapor is there in the sideboard. We're not seeing particular anti-white hate to really make this deck go over the top, but it did break into the top eight. It's a great combo deck. Death and Taxes also made it to the top eight. Death and Taxes has been doing really well recently. At other events, we've seen two or even three copies of Death and Taxes in the top eight. This particular one is very similar to the Death and Taxes we've been seeing recently. Three Caracuses should be pointed out because we've got a lot of Sneak and Show currently. Upping the number of Caracas is very important. We are also seeing two Cavern of Souls where a lot of these only play one. I would actually up the Cavern of Souls to maybe three or if I was playing against a Heavy Miracles environment. The other thing that's really interesting about this deck is that we've got all the new cards in here. We've got Recruiter of the Guard, Prelate, and Palace Jailer. Yes, forecasting cost 2-2 two, two is making it into death and taxes. This is a way to draw cards. This is a way to exile something that your opponent is putting in under show and tell. It's a nice enters the battlefield effect. Very, very cool card overall. This is the coolest tech added to this deck is the Jailer. Now we're moving on to show and tell, which placed in the top eight and won the tournament. This is the deck list that did not win. It has some cool stuff to it. It's a little bit of a faster deck list of the two. It's running four dazes, and it tries to go off a little bit faster with a Simeon Spirit Guide and a few extra creatures here. It's a little less on the control side. It has extra Besiege You, who shelters all, and a solid sideboard with Blood Moons and Through the Breaches. The deck that won is a little bit more control-based, where you have a Jace the Mind Sculptor, four Spell Pierces in here, two Grim Lava Mancers to help deal with your Death and Taxes decks, another Jace the Mind Sculptor in the sideboard. Uh, this is a very classic Sneak and Show deck with Gristlebrands, Emmercools, and a good amount of control in it. This deck has crazy potential to be super fast. This is a hand that was seen in the finals. Turn one, Emmercool with Force of Will backup. That is just crazy over the top. Wonderfully powerful deck. This is a deck to watch out for and is very popular currently. Well done. Something really interesting is that this tournament was missing Abrupt Decays in the top eight. A lot of Miracles, but no Abrupt Decay. A lot of Counterbalance, no Abrupt Decay. Also, no Thought Knot Seers. Overall, I was surprised to see how little Eldrazi there was. There was some Eldrazi that hit the top 16 and top 32, but it did not dominate or break into the top 8. Terminus is a very strong answer for a Thought Knot Seer, especially if you can get a top out early and float it on top of your deck for a while. It's very difficult to remove at that point. This is one of the better answers out there to Eldrazi is Miracles with Terminus. I also like a moat in the sideboard, although that seems to be a little bit less popular in this particular tournament. What legacy deck would you like to see a deck tech on? I'm going to be building a new legacy deck this month, and I will do a deck tech for it. It's going to come from the suggestions from this video. For the most vital tech, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And to play me at chess, friend me under sartorus at chess.com. Until next time, choose the cards wisely.